If I had to choose which reworks I was most looking forward to at the time they were announced and before any of us have even seen what the updated versions look like, it would have to be any of the really degenerate cheesy picks like Old Poppy, Pantheon and stuff. Main reason being, I'm curious to see how they can possibly retain their original playstyle or theme while making them actually functional in modern day League of Legends. Oftentimes, for a champion with an importantly bad design such as Old Zion, the situation calls for a total dismantling of their existing design as there's usually nothing salvageable or worth keeping. For all intents and purposes, they delete the champion in question and create an entirely new one who happens to have the same name. Maybe one or two minute details carry over. At least, that's how it appeared to be for the majority of drastic visual gameplay updates. Galio and Urgot are some prime examples. There's little, if anything, that transferred from their prior iterations to the current one, and while their present designs are far more healthy and viable for the game, it is a shame that their old identities were scrapped because while few in number, some people liked how they were before. So when I found out Nunu was scheduled to receive a VGU, I was under the impression that they would ditch everything besides maybe Absolute Zero. In my opinion, there was nothing worth preserving in his old kit. Yet, to probably everyone's surprise, his rework was able to transform him from a cheesy troll jungler to one of the best fundamental junglers in the entire game while feeling very much like the original. Back then, we were just coming off of Irelia, Aatrox, and Akali's reworks which left a bad taste in many players' mouths but I wager this one was able to reignite our faith in champion reimaginings. So let's roll around just how Riot was able to turn a completely garbage champion into one of the best designed in the game with Nunu and Williams <laughs> Nunu and Willem's rework, a retrospective. Really quickly though, I just want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Facecheck. For those of you who are looking for a more convenient way to access information on champions and players from game to game, Facecheck is an overlay app found on Overwolf that shows relevant stats and such without you having to manually search them up on your browser. There are three key parts to make note of. The first is Champ Select, where Face Check searches and displays your team members' profiles to see what champs they play and if they're potentially autofilled, while for you it recommends items and runes for you to use based on what champion you lock in. While in game as the players load in, it displays a full stat breakdown and track record of all 9 other players, with tags detailing their build paths and recent playstyle habits, such as if they play really aggressive early game or if they like to split push. You're also able to search up what specific runes they took besides their keystone and secondary so you know exactly what they're fielding. Pair this up with their previous builds and you'll be able to notice if they're trying any funky off-meta strategies. Finally, when you wrap up the game, there's a full analysis waiting for you detailing your performance to see what you did well, what you did wrong, or what you did that was different from what you normally do so you can see where you need to improve on. All in all, it's a wonderful companion app that's here for your convenience and improvement so I highly suggest you check it out through the link on screen which is also in the description. Thanks once again to Facecheck for sponsoring the video, but for now, let's get back into it. To give you an idea just how important Nunu's rework was for the champion's longevity, let's take a look at the graph on screen. The relaunch took place on August 28th, 2018, so a little less than 4 years ago. You'll notice that prior to the update, aside from a few blips here and there, the average pick rate for Nunu was down in the 1 percentile, putting him at rock bottom in terms of popularity. The graph only goes as far back as mid-2014, but I'd imagine their presence was even worse considering they got a mini gameplay update around Season 7, which explains that one segment with 8% pick rate. Post-2018 though, their pick rate would gradually increase over the years, to the point where they now average at about a 4-5%. It's not the highest, mind you, but the significance of this is that Nunu and Willem are slowly but surely becoming more and more of a household name in the jungle, compared to before where you'd only pick them for fun or to run it down. For anyone who remembers their old version, it should come as no surprise that Nunu was just a mess. As a member of the original 40 champions in League, his kit was very reflective of Riot's vision on how champions should function back when they were a small indie company. Initially, he was intended to be a control jungler with the ability to quickly steal enemy jungle monsters as well as clear his own at record pace. Then in the mid to late game, he could exercise that control by taking down neutral objectives like Dragon and Baron, while in combat serving as a giant meat shield for his team with the gold and experience he most likely commandeered away from the enemy jungler. Sounds like a French concept. Nowadays, when you think of the jungle world, they're supposed to roam around the map, gank lanes, and start skirmishes to gain a kill advantage over their opponent. Predator junglers like Rek'Sai, Kha'Zix, Lee Sin, Kane, Rangar, and such have been dominating the role for almost half a decade. But the jungle environment was far different back then, figuratively and literally. There used to be a subsection of characters who used the role's PvE nature to their advantage, power farming camps to reach their power spikes at less risk to their lives due to not having to contend with the lane opponent. Nunu was one of them, his combat pressure was by all accounts very weak, especially on his own, as the only real consistent source of damage in his kit was Ice Blast, a point and click damaging ability. The numbers may look impressive, but since that was his only source of damage, there wasn't much he could do against just about everyone but he wasn't supposed to. His goal in the early game was simply to run around the jungle farming camps, trying to disrupt the enemy jungler's momentum as much as possible, and then hope that he has enough stats to be a half-decent tank for his team later on. Not really the most exciting gameplay in the world. Fortunately for him, his kit was designed specifically to do just that. 
For starters, his past Visionary gave him a free ability cast every 5 auto attacks, which may not sound like much, but back in the day, a lot of junglers had issues with mana sustain unless they had a blue buff. It's not like today, where you can full clear level 1 and still be topped off. On the subject of sustenance, his passive took care of his mana while Consume took care of health. Similarly to the existing one, Consume would deal a huge amount of true damage to the target enemy minion or monster while healing him for a big chunk as well. But back then, he would get a long-lasting buff for bonus max health, out-of-combat movement speed, and on-hit magic damage stacking up to 5 times. This is actually a new thing they added in version 6.20, which dramatically increases viability. Prior to that, Consume would give you a buff depending on the type of monster camp, so based on what you press queued on, you get bonus health, movement speed, or on-hit damage separately, whereas after, you could get a bit of all three no matter what. You may notice that Nunu's ult Consume could not be used on champions, effectively making it a worthless ability in combat unless you were fighting near minions. Aside from Ice Blast, his only other semblance of a combat ability was Blood Boil, which would juice up his and a target ally's attack speed, movement speed, and ability power, with the first and last attribute scaling off of his ability power. Since it lasted 12 seconds, if you so much as had even a little bit of cooldown reduction, Nunu was capable of sustaining the uptime of Blood Boil forever. Now the funny thing is, they added that AP buff about half a year before his relaunch, which allowed for some super cheesy gimmicks that would give his mid laner well over 1000 ability power even in the mid game. Already there's a myriad of issues with this kit though. For one, there's virtually no cohesion between his basic abilities as each one of them has different purposes. Even other junglers among the original 40, such as Rammus, had a functional kit with abilities that helped each other. Spike Shell increases damage output based on his armor, Powerball gave him a big boost of movement speed to charge at his opponents. When he landed, he could cast Defensive Ball Curl to augment his defenses even further, then use Puncturing Taunt to force his target to attack him, subsequently triggering the recoil damage. Inversely, Nunu's Consume, Blood Boil, and Ice Blast were mutually exclusive abilities that didn't really help each other in any way. I mean, I suppose Ice Blast could slow down enemies, so then you can use Blood Boil to walk up to them and then the on-hit damage from Consume can synergize with the attack speed, but as far as playstyle goes, there's no formal connection between the two. Even for old league standards, there was no rhyme or reason to his kit that would pose a satisfying experience for players. His passive could be viewed as a mana battery in essence, so it's free mana. Consume was free max health, Blood Boil was free attack and movement speed, Ice Blast was an attack speed cripple, and slow. There was quite literally no skill involved in Nunu's kit, no form of outplay, no mechanics, not even combos. The only shining virtue that set him apart from others was Absolute Zero, a massive area slow and crippled that could be channeled for up to 3 seconds, dealing an equally massive amount of damage, enough to probably one-shot any squishy champion if you want ability power. For a time after the AP bonus was added to Blood Boil, people used to run him top or mid with an AP jungler and repeatedly harass you with Ice Blast while out-sustaining you with Consume, since it would heal him for like 200 health every 10 seconds in the early game. You can think of it almost like what Malphite does now. He chunks you with Q over and over and usually out-sustains you with Granite Shield. Then when you're low, he would all in with his ultimate and there's really nothing you could do about it. Nunu's was even more annoying since he had legitimate sustain. Conventional Nunu wasn't all that fun to play or play against either. He would spend the entirety of the early game running around, taking camps, racking up stacks of well fed, then being annoying for the rest of the match. The only time he was ever played was when Riot would accidentally overbuff his numbers to a level where no one could challenge him. I remember on patch 6.20, Nunu could get 3000 health at level 9 with Cinder Hulk, 5 stacks of his Q buff, and a Ruby Crystal. That's it. Nunu was a champion who lived and died by stats. If his stats were high, people would play him. If his stats were low, no one would play him. Additionally, there was a sort of stigma associated with Nunu, referred to as Disco Nunu. Trolls and Inters would often run him with Ghost and Cleanse, then when the game started, they would, as you could probably guess, run down people's lanes and start Control 3 which is a champion's dance animation. They obviously won with Nunu in light of him being widely considered a troll pick even if you were trying to play him seriously. Prevailing sentiments most of the time were against him. Poor guy was in desperate need of a rework more than anyone to be honest. His kit wasn't just outdated, it was one of the worst designed in the entire game. Bottom 3, not even a question. So when we were made aware of his rework in spring of 2018, everyone sort of unanimously agreed that he was one of the VGU projects where pulling an Aatrox level rework was not only preferred, but maybe necessary if they wanted to make him viable in the modern landscape. His main concern, among many others, was that his kit was implicitly designed to interact with the enemy team as infrequently as possible, almost like it was a single player game. Sure, he had a big team fight ultimate, but his normal abilities were not suited for combat whatsoever, and League's essential experience is founded upon fighting each other whenever the circumstances allow it. That said, his most iconic ability is actually not Absolute Zero, it's Consume. Being able to eat monsters is kind of his thing, but it was also one of the leading contributors to his degenerate playstyle. Riot's overall direction suggested they would have to rebuild him from the ground up, and their main priority was to lock down Absolute Zero, which I agree with even though I don't consider it to be as important as Consume. Though surprisingly, they were resolute on preserving Consume as well. 
Overall though, they wanted to make the champion feel like you were piloting two characters, not just one. All of Nunu's old abilities involved his Yeti, who to most people felt like a mindless drone rather than a living sentient being. When they said that, I thought they were just trying to appeal to a theme or something. I didn't think they literally meant two characters because now it's no longer Nunu, it's Nunu and William. <laughs> Nunu and Willop. You gotta make sure you include Willop. They don't actually constitute two entities in game like Clyde and Scarl do, mind you, but their abilities, animations, and appearances place an emphasis on both characters as two individuals rather than a random kid on top of a Yeti. And can I just say, I love Willem's new design. It looks so much more warm and fluffy than his old one. Now, despite claiming to rebuild them from the ground up, Nunu and Willem feel closer to their previous iterations than even the likes of Swain or Evelyn, who theoretically had less changes. They actually took away nothing from the original kit. Well, maybe like one or two small details, but curiously, Nunu and Willop retained basically all of the main aspects of their kit, while having new things added that vastly improved their quality of life. Call of the Freljord retains Blood Boil's old attack and movement speed buff that can be shared with one ally champion. It's supplanted visionary, but if you remember nowadays, mana issues are almost non-existent for junglers. Consume still does a bunch of true damage to monsters while healing you for a big chunk of health, but in place of the well-fed buff, you can now use Q on champions too, dealing magic damage instead and healing you for slightly less than against monsters. Consume is now a combat ability. Since Blood Boil is effectively their passive, that frees up the W slot to be a new ability, and boy is it an ability. Biggest snowball ever has a lot of text, but the long and short of it is, you build up a snowball over time that ramps up in size, damage, and knockup duration as you travel, and it shares the same increasing movement speed as similar long distance channel moves like Rammus, Scion, and Kled. A fully charged snowball not only does a ton of damage, but knocks up all enemy champions caught in it. This ability checks off two boxes that were once left empty. The first being an actual way to gank. Previously, Nunu's ganks consisted of walking up to your opponent, throwing ice blasts at them, then continuing to walk up to them and auto-attacking. That was it. Biggest snowball ever changes all of that. It's not only one of the best ganking tools in the game, but it finally gives them hard crowd control as well, something they were completely lacking in despite their designation as tanks. Ice Blast was also changed to have more practical applications. Snowball Barrage repeatedly strikes nearby targets while slowing them. Champions and monsters are given a debuff as well. After 3 seconds, all debuffed enemies around them take magic damage and are rooted. So Nunu and Willump were given not one, but two forms of hard crowd control, and both are AoE. See, there are three things tanks are well known for, especially the vanguards. Area coverage, crowd control, and engage. You look at someone like, say, Orn. He can render large areas of a battlefield hazardous with his big attacks. He has tons of hard crowd control that can be used for both disruption and lockdown, and his engage is also really deadly in the right circumstances. Old Nunu had none of those. No crowd control, hardly any meaningful area coverage that was actually good. Absolute Zero wasn't very good on account of how easy it was to cancel. He was infinitely worse than any other tank in terms of what he brought to the table for his team. Nunu and Willem's new W and E alone turned them from one of the worst tanks in the game to one of the best conceptually speaking, and they did that without having to introduce any overpowered mechanic or balance problem. Biggest Snowball Ever does get a lot of flag for being too strong of a basic ability, but it's also very slow to activate and can be sidestepped easily. Same with Snowball Barrage. The root portion is dependent on them being close to enemy champions for at least 3 seconds, plenty of time for anyone with mobility or self heal to escape. There is a reasonable amount of counterplay within these abilities. The added area coverage upholds their clear speed too. Absolute Zero doesn't lower attack speed anymore, but they now gain a shield so they can survive enemy counterattacks during that time. Makes sense after all, they leave themselves wide open. All they had to discard in exchange for these were the ability power bonus from Blood Boil, the attack speed cripple from Ice Blast, and the max health boost from Consume. All of these are stats which were reimbursed in other forms anyway. They have way more combat pressure, way more gank pressure, and actual hard crowd control. Riot was able to keep everything relevant about their old kit and reimagine them in such a way that it fits modern design standards. You guys know me, I criticize Riot's design team on a lot of things they do, but I'm giving credit where credit is due. Justin Hansen oversaw Nunu's gameplay changes and I have to give him props for that. Next to Pantheon and Fiddlesticks, Nunu and Willem's rework was one of Riot's best, if not the best. Everyone says Fiddle's rework was number one, but truthfully speaking, his original kit was way more functional than Nunu's. In terms of sheer transformation, Nunu and Willems blows everyone out of the water. They capture the original essence of the champion, which was a dumpster fire, and turned it into one of League's best designed tank junglers I've ever seen. The best part is, they made the champion extremely fun to play. A common occurrence for junk champions is that they're made less unique or enjoyable to play since oftentimes what makes them fun is what holds them back. The two that immediately come to mind are Mordekaiser and Swain. A good number of players who frequently use them prior to their VGU have expressed how much they miss Mordekaiser being able to control the Ghost of the Dragon, or toggling Swain's old ultimate on and off, or his Q using Beatrice. I think I speak with utmost certainty that Nunu and Willump are far more engaging now than before. 
Be that as it may, I will concede that to an extent they lost their very niche counter jungling playstyle, but in fairness, Poacher's Knife as an idea was very counterintuitive to the game. The jungle is not designed to be an AFK farm world, it's supposed to be the X factor that influences how the mid game will be, and Nunu exemplified this in all of the worst ways possible. I wasn't kidding. Your objective was to interact with your opponent as little as possible. Unconventional strategies are fine to have, as long as they're conducive to a positive experience in League. This wasn't one of them. Nunu and Willem's rework was very much needed, and thankfully was a monumental success. The champion duo is now a frequent site in the jungle and can be played in different ways with a much healthier playstyle now than before. Couldn't have designed it better myself. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, it would be awesome if you gave it a like and subscribe. Consider following me on Twitter, joining my Discord server, and checking out my previous retrospectives if you haven't yet. But for now, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.